Okay, I think we're live. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Craig Beck, aka Stop Drinking Expert. I am back in Cyprus off my travels to London, England, and here for another weekly support session where we all get together and just have our little moment, uh, our little private meeting here where we uh, either celebrate another sober week or we say, I need a bit of help and uh, we can all collectively do that because I think we are stronger together. I find these weekly meetings really valuable. I hope you do as well. If you're new here, if this is your first time to one of our live uh, streams, then please hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Um, I would love this channel to be the go-to point for problem drinkers all over the world. Uh, and hopefully you agree that the sort of things we talk about here and the stories that we share are really useful. Uh, but it would be great if we could just meet, reach other people. There's something like you know, 54,000 subscribers to this channel, but there are millions and millions of problem drinkers out there. So wouldn't it be great to reach them all? Uh, I can't do it, but you can. And I'm asking you, would you please just make sure that every time you watch one of my videos, you hit that like button, make sure you subscribe to the channel and share the videos on your social media as well. That's how we reach new people. So let's say hello uh, to who we've got here, and I will notice the people who are missing because we have a kind of a regular group going on now, don't we? Uh, Stephen Hall is uh, on board nice and early, says been sober for over a month now. Done it before, two and a half years, but thought I could go back and be normal. Ah, that old trap. I watched all of your videos, looking forward to watching you live today for the first time. Well, welcome to the gang, Stephen, and congratulations on discovering that there is no such thing as a normal drinker of poison. Uh, Marty is here in Georgia, two years, three months, alcohol three, thanks to your program. Uh, Sober is awesome. Love these live YouTube sessions. Thanks and keep up the good work. Excellent. Rhubarb is on board. Hello, Rhubarb. Um, Lucy is here. Hi, Lucy. Lindsay is saying good morning. JR's in Norway. Love live now. Uh, Celia. Um, Says, hello, everyone. You got this. Stefan is in Switzerland. We've got, uh, oh, Celia's in Denmark. We need more sober people in Scandinavia. Did you hear that? That was just, maybe you didn't hear that. It was the loudest thunder I've ever heard. Wow, that's scary. It's weird because the, the skies are completely clear here. This could get interesting. Um, Slavi's here from, in California. Victoria is in Florida, loving the online course. It's great help quitting alcohol. Thank you very much. KB is another regular face here. Good morning, uh, KB, or good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, we've got uh, K2 from Texas, AMA Rocks. So glad to be alcohol-free seven weeks today. Thank you. You're a superstar. Well done. Leslie Black is here as well. Good morning, Craig. Next Tuesday, I will be one year no drinking. I know you say not to count the days, but it's a milestone. I plan to stop counting, as you suggest, and would like to hear again your reason for it. Uh, okay, let's just touch on that. Because people, I think people overstate my, um, people say, Craig says, you absolutely are not allowed to count the days. That's not really my point on it. I think you probably shouldn't. You shouldn't get wrapped up in counting the days because it kind of gives too much power to alcohol. This is, this is all my thinking. Uh, you wouldn't do it with something else, would you? You wouldn't say, um, let's let's have a think, you know, uh, you wouldn't count the days since you had a last last had a pizza. And and to be, you know, if you are counting the days since you last had a pizza, it suggests not that you're totally in control of your pizza consumption, but you have a bit of a problem with pizza. Do you see what I mean? Because when something's not a big issue in your life, it's not important. You don't really think about it. You don't give it a second thought. So to then go, um, you know, I'm 47 days sober today and tomorrow I'll be 48. I'm looking forward to being 50 days sober. You're giving alcohol more credit and more power than it's due. Now, if you want to roughly know in your head when you stop drinking and you go, oh, wow, it's, it's one year today. Great. As long as it's not an obsession. That's all I'm saying, really. I just think if you if constantly, you know, you've got an app on your phone and you're constantly going, oh, you know, oh, two more days and then I've done two months. 
it's not a healthy state of mind to be in. You're, you're obsessing about something. Now, great, you're not obsessing about alcohol anymore, but you are obsessing about the distance from alcohol. Uh, and it's, it's, I just don't think it's healthy. But it's not a major sin, Leslie. It's not like you've you know, committed a cardinal sin by counting the days. So uh, that's all to Lee and Judy and Jem is here. I will come back and say hello to a few more people. Just wanted to share this with you today. Um, this is quite interesting. One alcoholic drink a day will reduce the size of your brain. This is one pub measure, not one of the size that you pour or I would have poured, right? Um, and the interesting thing about this is, like many things with alcohol, the damage that it does is not linear. Uh, and by that, I remember a few weeks ago, I told you that uh, there's some pretty solid research that suggests if you drink one bottle of wine a day for a couple of decades, you will knock eight years off your life nearly a decade of your life gone. Now, if the damage from alcohol was linear, as in the more you drank, you got a corresponding effect, then drinking two bottles of wine a day would knock how much off your life? 16 years, yeah, double. But it's not the case. Two bottles of wine a day for a couple of decades will knock 21 years off your life. And what this article is talking about, and this is a fairly robust piece of research, 36,000 adults surveyed for this research. They did the brain measurements to see what effect alcohol had on the brain. Uh, and they concluded that even one drink, one glass of wine a day will damage your brain. But, and the, strange, the funny thing is in, in here from our point of view, they talk about heavy drinkers. And when they talk about heavy drinkers in this article, they're talking about people who have three glasses of wine a day. I mean, I was drinking two bottles of wine a day, so God knows what that made me, but three glasses of wine a day, according to this article, you're a heavy drinker. And they're saying the difference between one glass of wine and three glasses of wine a day is, is dramatic. You're, to, you're talking like reducing your brain size by, you know, three, four, five percent, something like that. So just interesting to see, you know, more and more research coming out that these, you know, all these suggestions by the alcohol industry that there are health benefits to alcohol in moderation is just 100% horseshit. There is no safe amount of alcohol. There's no heart health benefits from drinking red wine. Gin doesn't make you lose weight. It's you know, it's not good for depression or anxiety. Moderate drinkers don't really live longer than sober drinkers. We've talked about that before. You know, the research was fundamentally flawed. And so it's just good to see more and more data coming out that suggests there is no safe amount of alcohol. So if you've made that decision, if you are on the sober path, um, then no that your health is getting better by the day because of this. I'll tell you what was interesting on my trip to the UK, because I live in um, in Cyprus and it's, you know, Cyprus is lovely, it's sunny and it's warm. And, you know, I live by the sea and it's beautiful, but it is a bit like going back in time. Living in Cyprus is a bit like, in many ways, living in the 1970s. You know, they still have half day closing here on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Nothing opens on a Sunday. Um, we, I get post, I get the mail delivered once a week if I'm lucky. And if it's raining, the postman won't come. So I'll have to wait another week. So some, it takes about a month to get a letter to me here from the United Kingdom. So it's, it's all very kind of backwards in that way. So when I go to the UK, it's like going back to civilization. And I've noticed it in the supermarkets uh, in the UK, there's alcohol-free stuff everywhere now. They've got alcohol-free spirit sections, alcohol-free beers, alcohol-free IPAs. They've got so much stuff. And it all seems to have arrived in the last year. It's, it's gone crazy. And what I want to know in the comments below, please, or wherever you're watching, is that the same where you are? Where are you in the world? And has the alcohol-free choice gone crazy? That's what I want to know. All righty. So that's all I wanted to share today. Um, and I will pass the rest of the session over to you. You can ask me anything, any questions lurking, any problems, any situations you've run into, or do you just want to tell us 
how many days sober you are and have a little bit of a celebration. By the way, if you want to see today's t-shirt, I like that one. It's my favorite one. Uh, all right, Lee, hello from sunny Florida. Judy, hello. Um, hi, Craig, greetings from the A1 at Newark. Uh, okay, very good. Uh, Nurse Babs, good morning from Pennsylvania. Uh, Victoria, how can I donate dollars to your channel? Uh, I think you, on YouTube, you can do something called a super chat. You can do like, a, it's like a tipping thing. Uh, or you can become a member of the YouTube channel. Uh, that will give you kind of exclusive videos. Um, ah, I don't know. You have a look around. You might see something. Uh, it's very appreciated, by the way. Um, Leslie, uh, love the new weekly meetings and Wednesday meetings. I keep spreading the word. Uh, I like the full screen format of you. I think you sent me a message, didn't you? You don't like it when I do this, do you, Leslie? <laughs> yeah, I won't do it for long, I promise. Um, Brad, Craig. I just lost a loved one and I'm tempted to use alcohol to cope with the pain. Any advice? Absolutely, Brad. Um, and I know exactly how you feel. I know exactly how you feel. Um, the biggest wobble I had was 2017. Um, my ex-wife died. Um, you know, she wasn't ill or anything. She just died. And it was a real shock. And it was just a horrible moment in my life. Really, the worst moment in my life. Uh, you know, trying to console my kids and, and that sort of stuff. And it was in that awkward period between the death and the funeral. It was about a week in the UK between the death and the funeral. Um, and my kids were with their friends. And I was pleased about that because, they, you know, at least they were being distracted. And I was on my own. And I was in a shopping mall in the United Kingdom. And I was just walking along feeling pretty miserable. And all of a sudden, this wave of, I don't know, the evil clown came over me. And he just whispered in my ear. And he said, you don't need to feel like this. Just go into that shop there, go into that supermarket, buy a bottle of whiskey. David, because I stopped in the middle of this shopping mall. People were bumping into me and having to walk around me. I just stopped dead. And I was like, where did you come from? And I was thinking, wow, that's amazing. You waited this long and you waited for this moment to get me. So just know that, you know, when you're in this moment of grief, you're, you're at a moment of weakness. And because you've, you've been sober a while, that evil clown that lives in your head and you've deprived him of food and oxygen for so long, he's very, very weak now. So he's got to seize his moments. So he's not going to be jumping up and down every day saying, hey, why don't you drink a bottle of vodka? Because he knows it's a losing battle. But in these moments when he senses that you're on your knees and maybe the little bit of power he's got will be enough, this is when he jumps in and tries to get you. So just understand what is going on here. That little clown is seeing that you are vulnerable and he's trying to take advantage of that. Look, here's the absolute truth. Grief is horrible. Uh, you know, the first thing that I was told when I did my uh, neuro-linguistic uh, practitioner training course was, uh, in fact, the instructor, we went around the room and he said, what's your exit strategy? And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, what happens when you die? And he said, it doesn't matter if you believe nothing happens when you die, as long as you believe something, as long as you have clarity in your head about what happens to you and your loved ones after you die. That's really important because in the Western world, we don't talk about death. It's, it's this hush-hush thing, you know, people die and then the body is taken away. We never see it. And then it's, it's all sanitized and we, we go to the funeral and we still never see the body. And it's all quite weird. And we're all very scared of death. So when it hits us, it hits us hard in the West. So grief is painful and it's horrible. The one thing I'm, I'm absolutely sure of is that it is a process that you have to go through. And there's no way around it. There's no shortcut. There's no way to skip bits of it. There is an invisible time period that you'll, you won't know how long it is until you get to the other end of it, but you have to go through it. It's a healing process and it hurts. But if you drink alcohol at any point during that process, you will make it longer than it wanted to be. So David, ask yourself how you're feeling right now. Do you want that to be something you experience for as short as possible? 
Or do you want that feeling you have right now to linger on and on and on and on and on? Because that is what alcohol will do to you. It will take your pain and it will elongate it way beyond what was natural. Grieving is a process that alcohol pauses. Doesn't stop, doesn't get rid of it, doesn't make it go away, doesn't make it any easier, but it will make it a lot longer. So I understand solution. It's just going to mean that you're going to be in pain for longer, David. So just knuckle down, understand what's going on. And it's okay to feel bad. It's okay to feel this horrible. Be around other people. Share it with other people. I hope that helps. I know it's not a perfect answer, but I hope it helps. Hey, Robert, welcome in. You're very welcome. Eric the Red, um, here from the States, fighting the good fight, good man. Uh, we got Sketch here as well. Hi, Sketch. Um, uh, Philip X. Hi, Craig. I relapsed because of this war situation. Can you give us advice for avoiding this again? I shut all news down. It's better to be back with you. Media and alcohol really go together. Right? Um, I, I'm not a massive fan of justifying your drinking because it gives you sympathy from other people. It gets you sympathy, but sympathy is like the ruble. It's worthless. There's no point having it. It doesn't get you anything. You can't buy anything. It's, it's, there's no value to it. So you could say, you know, uh, you can put any statement in there. Hi, Craig, I, I, I relapsed because I got divorced. Hi, Craig, I relapsed because someone I loved died. Hi, Craig, I relapsed because I had an accident. The because doesn't make any difference. And we only put the because in there. So we hopefully get someone to go, oh, well, yeah, okay, I get it. Yeah, oh, well, obviously, of course, you, you don't beat yourself up. But anyone would have relapsed in that situation. And I think it, it doesn't do you any good to come up with an explanation. If you relapsed, you relapsed. That's just the end of it. There's no, there's no pity party. There's no, and I'm not trying to be horrible. I'm just saying that um, the best way to deal with relapse is to not make any excuses for it, not to justify it, just to say, you got me. You got me. Let me see how you got me. Oh, I see. You did that and then you did that. Oh, very good. Very good. Well done. And then dust yourself down and start again. Because if you keep making justifications for why you relapsed, that will carry on forever. There'll always be a good reason to relapse because you'll get over this and then life's going to throw you another curveball. We're almost certainly heading to a recession. Is, I mean, is that going to be the next reason? Do you see what I mean? That this justification carries on forever if you let it. So the best thing to do is almost just analyze how that clown got you. And then you're better prepared for the next time. All right. But I'm absolutely not having a go at you. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to give you uh, advice that I would give myself. Nadine. 11 days. Superstar. Uh, Kelly's here from New Jersey. We got Edison uh, on board as well. Jules is in the Seattle area. Uh, Jim, uh, my favorite pharmacist, is here. Welcome, Jim, in New York. Uh, Onel is here. Good morning. I uh, started taking naltrexone. Uh, interesting. Onel, uh, how are you finding it? Side effects? How is it affecting your alcohol consumption? Very interested to hear your, your, your points on that. Um, Graham is here from the Romney Marshes in Kent. Three years, three months. Well done, uh, Graham. Fantastic and good to see your Ukrainian flag on your profile there. Um, RV the van man live from New York. Thanks, Craig. Trish is here as well. Good day from Florida. I can't believe how quickly four days has become 40. You're the best, Craig. Thanks, Trish. 40 days is excellent. Uh, Holly, you superstar. Uh, just started your program. Good. What day are you up to, Holly? Where are you, and how's it going? Um, Chris Paul. <laughs> I'm still in the shock at the price of that 
alcohol-free gin. The price of Bavaria 0% alcohol went up in my local spa shop from $2.99 to $4.50. So I don't buy it now. It's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. That uh, If you didn't see it, I did a little taste test on Tanqueray's uh, alcohol-free gin. Um, and it was kind of a weird experiment for me. It was really quite confusing because do you ever go and see a movie and you leave the movie theater thinking, oh, I'm not sure about that. that. I'm not sure. But you, then you think about the movie for days and you realize, wow, what a powerful movie. The, the whole alcohol-free gin thing was quite confusing because once you mix it with tonic water, it really does taste like gin and tonic. But it was, and I was drinking it, but I was kind of forcing it down, even as though it was very authentic. And I was thinking, hang on, I don't get it because I used to love gin and tonic and this tastes like gin and tonic. So why am I forcing it down? There's that almost disappointing feeling, which made me think, well, maybe you never did like gin and tonic, Craig. Maybe you owe it. It was just a delivery mechanism for the alcohol. And that's why you feel disappointed is that your body expected something and didn't get it. And now you feel disappointed. And if that's true, then that's maybe a little bit dangerous, isn't it? If I'm drinking alcohol-free spirits and feeling disappointment, I don't think that's healthy. That doesn't feel right to me. But anyway, and, and the price, you know, $25 a bottle is for flavored water. Get stuffed. Uh, Jem. Um... Let's have a look. Uh, Jem, I was sober for over a year, then started drinking again last year. I've decided to quit again. I'm determined to succeed this time. I will sign up to your course, sick of alcohol controlling my life. Good call, Jem. Um, if you go to the website, stopdrinkingexpert.com, you can sign up for a free webinar, which will kind of explain how the process works. In fact, that is the only way you can join the program. Uh, that People say, well, I've been to your website and I can't see the join now button. That's because there isn't one. You have to put, you have to sit through me in the webinar to kind of demonstrate where your mindset is. Because a lot of people look for stop drinking courses and all they want to do is buy it. They don't want to do the course. They just want something to make them feel better. You know, like, oh, I've done something. Or I can tell my wife I've done something. Or I can tell my husband I've done something. So with my course, you have to put a little bit of effort in to be allowed into the system. So that's kind of how it works. Um, and welcome back, you know. It takes a sometimes it takes a long time to recover from a relapse, um, but the fact that you you know you did and you're trying again is a good thing. Um, that's the best advice I can give everyone. Is just it doesn't matter how many times you relapse, as long as you never give up, as long as you always get back up off the mat. That's the secret. Uh, Nadine, hello from the UK. That's very vague, Nadine. Whereabouts in the UK? Uh, Mark Keane, our smoking expert, is watching and on board. He's in Manchester. Um, what else we got here? Um, JR, I just know it's March. Then I know I've been sober for one more year. I love March now. <laughs> Fantastic. Love it. Um, Graham, I agree with what you're saying. I just had to work out how long sober I am, as I don't count. Good. Like that. Um, Nadine, I need to hear this as I'm getting obsessed with the app. Yeah. This is one of the things about AA that doesn't work for me is that if you, um, let's think of a good analogy here. Um, I, I hate fish, right? I can't eat fish, can't stand it. My wife loves fish. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Imagine you hated fish, right? Would you want to go and have a meeting every week to talk about how much you hate fish? No. Why would you? You hate fish. And that's the, one of the problems with Alcoholics Anonymous is that all these people whose lives have been destroyed by alcohol and despise this stuff get together every week to talk about it. Ah, that's, not, that's not recovery, is it? That's not life. That's just committing to misery for the rest of your life. So that's you know part of the reason why I say don't obsess about any element of alcohol. 
because it doesn't deserve it. It's destroyed elements of your life and it doesn't deserve that much of your time and energy. Kelly Roberts, uh, Robert Sazi, um, the course works. I listen to the book on Audible all the time, the first few days. Then I listen to the hypnosis tracks, both AM and PM. That's hardcore. For 21 days, it worked. Almost eight months, no cravings. Fantastic. And Jem says, isn't it strange how they build places for everyone to meet up and indulge in this drug, i.e. pubs and bars? Can't think of any other drug they do that with. Not in the UK anyway. No. I mean, they used to have smoking rooms, didn't they, you know, in bars and things like that, where everyone could go and smoke together. But the thing is about alcohol uh, that isn't true about nicotine and cigarettes um, is alcohol changes your mental state. It interferes with the way you think. And so the reason why, you know, pubs make alcohol cheaper than soft drinks, and I've told you this before there is a bar here near my house about three kilometers from my house pint of beer one euro 80 half a pint of coca-cola three euros 50 and the reason for that is because even if you intend to just have one drink there's a very good chance you're going to have more because the first thing alcohol does is switch off your ability to make sound and logical decisions so bar owners like alcohol drinkers because they tend not to just have one drink. They don't like people like me because the chances are I'm going to come in and have a Coke and then I'm not thirsty anymore. You know, alcohol drinkers are not drinking because they're thirsty. There is no justification. You could not be thirsty enough to need 10 pints of liquid to, to get rid of your thirst. It's insane. Um, but yeah, it is strange. It's a strange drug. It's a strange world we live in, isn't it? I mean, you think about it in the United Kingdom at the moment. I don't know if you've heard this. There's been this big uproar about Boris Johnson throwing parties um, when we were supposed to be in the middle of a lockdown for COVID. And that's bad. But it's also highlighted that there's a lot of alcohol in the government buildings in number 10 Downing Street. There's alcohol everywhere. It seems like even work meetings come with a glass of whiskey in their hand. And if you think about it, you, if you change the drug, how would you, how could anyone tolerate their leaders being off their heads on drugs while being in charge of making huge decisions about what's going on in Ukraine, what's going on with the pandemic, what's going on with the economy? If you found out that your president or your prime minister was off his head on heroin during the war meetings about Ukraine, wouldn't you be furious? But alcohol, it just seems like, oh, we, we, we drank a lot of alcohol. We must not do that anymore. Crazy situation. <laughs> just talking about that initial article about alcohol reduces the size of your brain. Rob Wood says, oh, my God, my brain would be like a walnut. Anyone got a nutcracker? Yeah, scary. Hi to Jan from Perth. Amazing grace. Everyone, please pray for me. I'm trying to quit drinking. I drink every week at least four days a week, and that's too much. I want to be healthy and fit and find better ways to deal with my life. Okay. Well, we're sending you our best message, Amazing Grace. Uh, just get the tools to do the job. Don't try and strong arm this. You know, don't try and do this with willpower because there's a very good chance you'll fail. Then you need to have a system to deal with this. All right. Don't just stumble around hoping that uh, you, you know, you're just going to turn into someone who doesn't like alcohol. It doesn't work like that. You have to invest some time and effort. So uh, it's good to see you here and you're welcome. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Kelly says, I'm gaining back years of my life. I was a bad drinker, a bottle a day plus. Um, should I be like a doctor, Kelly, and double what you said? Apparently, uh, doctors, when you go, when they ask you how much you drink, they always double it. So that's a relief for me when I say zero. They can't do much with that. Uh, but they never believe me. Um, Kelly, with a message for Amazing Grace, please try the program. Also, here's a thought. Are you drinking now? Wait five minutes and ask yourself again, am I drinking now? Keep doing that. Okay. Uh, Dina, my friend from Australia. Um do you remember the days when we could travel, Dina? <laughs> uh, it's getting better now, of course. 
I'm glad you're doing some live refreshes as despite hanging up my wine glass in February 2019, sometimes I have to binge on Quitlet podcasts and videos to remind myself where I'm going and why. Yeah. You know, it's like I always say, Dina, it's, it's not, you know, this is not a one shot wonder. It's not something you do once. Indeed, it's a bit like bathing. I encourage you to do it regularly. <laughs> um, let's have a look. Philip Lane. Yes, allowing yourself the occasional drink without getting drunk the same as remaining sober. <laughs> no, Philip. No. Uh, because you're not that implies that you are in control of that situation and you are very firmly not in control you get one choice and that's that first drink whether you have a second drink or not who knows maybe you will maybe you won't but it's not your choice Al the the evil clan will make that choice maybe if you're very good and in the initial stages of this policy you will be able to white knuckle it and ignore the voice saying go on just have another one but at some point you'll break. At some point you'll be so cheesed off, you'll have su such a bad day, you'll think, sod it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have another one. And then you'll have another one, then you'll have another one. Honestly, probably more than 50% of the people come to my website with the goal of not stopping drinking, but trying to moderate their drinking. And I will say the, this to you with absolute honesty and certainty, moderating your drinking is hell on earth. It's awful. Quitting is easy. That's honestly the truth. Moderation is a bitch. Why? Because it's you're, you're constantly keeping him alive. You're giving him oxygen. You're giving him food and power. And if you say to yourself, I'm only allowed one drink a day, then what are you thinking about all day? You're looking at your watch, aren't you? You're going, oh, three hours, and I'm going to have my drink two hours and I can have my drink or oh, one hour then I can have my drink and then you have your drink and you go oh I can't wait till tomorrow when I can have another one your whole life is dominated by this obsessive thought of when you can drink next and then you get into other problems like let's uh, let's say that you said to yourself I'm allowed one drink every day at six o'clock and you, you, get, you think about it all day you're excited all day six o'clock six o'clock six o'clock and you get home at six o'clock and your wife or your husband says to you, come on, we've got to go out and see my mom. We're going to visit my family. And you're driving. You're furious. You're so angry. So you have a big row because someone else, how dare they, has interrupted the best moment of your day. So it would be lovely, wouldn't it? But it's, unfortunately, it's not true. Um, uh, Facebook user. It's always anonymous on Facebook for some reason. If you want your name mentioned, you have to put your name at the start. Uh, Dublin Island, lots more options of alcohol-free beer. That's good to hear because, you know, Dublin has a big drinking um, history, doesn't it? In fact, the worst attended boot camp I ever did was Dublin. I probably picked a really bad day to do it, to be fair. It was, uh, there was a big rugby match on that day. Uh, Michael is here. Uh, hi, Craig. Mike K here in northeast Pennsylvania. Have two years and four months. Uh, but I only now just counted. You saved my life. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I'm now surviving a throat cancer surgery and doing radiation. Uh, but even though you were right, my life has been nothing but incredible since I finally quit after 48 years of drinking. It only took 20 minutes into my first meeting with you. Never sweated a single moment since. Thanks so much. Wow. How powerful is that, eh? That's, that's amazing, Mike. And I'm so glad that alcohol is not in your life at this point because to go through what you're going through now while nursing a drinking problem, well, who knows, you know? Maybe the situation would have been much worse if you hadn't have stopped. So uh, we're, we're all rooting for you. We're all sending our love to you. And we hope uh, you recover perfectly from this operation and you never have to worry about this again. But very, very proud of you. Uh, RV man says, don't count the days, I do count the dollars. I like that. Um, Star Child says, I live in the sticks, no alcohol free stuff, but I'd rather drink water with lemon. Yeah, the alcohol free stuff is expensive and confusing, I think. Uh, confusing in the way that it makes you feel. 
Um, KB, uh, for those of us, for, uh, for those in the US, where in the store do you find the alcohol free drinks? Hopefully not mixed in with the regular stuff. I don't want to shop in that section. Unfortunately, I think it is. Well, it might be in the UK. It was when I found it in the UK, it was just kind of, it was like beer. And then the corner section was alcohol free and then it was spirits. It was kind of, it was mixed in, um, which is a bit weird, isn't it really? And the other weird thing is I got ID'd. I couldn't, buy, <laughs> I had to get my driving license out <laughs> to buy alcohol free gin. Um, Edison, is relapse worse than the original problem? I relapsed twice and each time I felt a stronger beast than the one before. Uh, to a certain extent, Edison, yes, because uh, the way this normally goes, you know, nobody comes to me before trying anything else. I'm nobody's first port of call. You know, people come to me out of desperation because initially when people started saying to them, I think you've got a bit of a drinking problem. And they, you know, initially they denied it and fought against it. And then they said, well, you know, I can stop drinking anytime I want. Then they realized they couldn't. Then they tried a few silly gimmicks and routines and saying, oh, well, you know, I'll drink every other day or I'll only drink wine. I won't drink any spirits. They came up with all these stupid rules to try and control their drinking. Then they realized that didn't work. And at that point, maybe I'm talking, you know, years down the road, they come to me and go, well, I don't know how to fix this. And I talk people through my course, you know, at the website and I say, well, you do this and you do that. And this is why that's happening. And a light bulb goes off. They go, oh, man, I get it. I get it. And they stop drinking. It's, and it seems so easy. And then, you know, six months later, they're looking back with rose tinted glasses on and they think oh, I can probably just have a, you know, one drink. And they relapse and they feel very bad about themselves. They feel very guilty and they think, right, well, I'll just do what I did before. The problem is everything that worked before, you've now just given that evil clown some ammunition because everything you now say to the evil clown that you said before that stopped you drinking, he's going to say doesn't work. Proved it. Don't tell me that stuff. It doesn't work. That Craig Beck doesn't know anything. What he says is rubbish. It's obviously a scam. It doesn't work. So you've given the evil clown this really powerful defense against the tools you were previously using. So that's why I say, you know, go back and do it again. But you've got to add something new in now. You've got to strengthen your arsenal. So maybe if you're doing my course, you would do the course again. But you'd also bring in, you buy some new books that you've not read before. You'd subscribe to my other YouTube channels. Maybe you'd go to an AA meeting. It just adds something else in to give you just that little bit extra because now you need it. Do you see what I mean? How you just need a stronger argument the second time around. That's why I say the five most dangerous words on planet Earth are just one drink won't hurt. And if you ever, ever catch yourself thinking just one drink won't hurt. I advise you to punch yourself in the face as hard as you can, because that's the last thing you're going to think before something very bad happens that's going to be very difficult for you to get out of. Uh, perhaps the alcohol, this is interesting, Lindsay, perhaps the alcohol industry can be sued like Philip Morris in the 90s. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, I think they're probably a little bit smarter than the cigarette uh, industry, but they're still actively denying in many cases that their product causes uh, cancer. Uh, they, their usual defense, which is probably a little bit different to the tobacco industry, is as long as you drink in moderation, you're fine. And we as a company actively encourage our customers to drink in moderation. Um, which is is nonsense, really, isn't it? Because they know that their their primary customers, their cash cows, the people like me that were buying two bottles of wine a day, we can't drink in moderation. It's just not possible. You might they might as well say we advise you to breathe underwater. Well, yeah, I can't. So you know, thanks for the advice. It's the same when they they stick on um, wine bottles. You've seen it. 
please drink responsibly. Well, I don't know how to do that. So thanks. Thanks for the advice, but no thanks. Um, I'm sure I'm missing loads of people, but uh, I'll try and skip through a little bit. Um, somebody here is saying they've, they've decided to drink no more vodka, only whiskey from now on. <laughs> That'll work. Yeah, that, that's great. Um, Jules, I don't get it. I thought this was live, but I don't see the comments from others. Uh, it depends where you're watching, Jules. You're on Facebook, aren't you? It's probably some quirk of Facebook. Um, don't forget, people are watching this in lots of locations, Jules. That you, uh, There are people on YouTube watching. There are people on Facebook. Uh, there are people on Twitch. There are people on Twitter. Uh, I'm guessing you might only see the comments for your own platform, and I don't really understand how Facebook does it, so don't panic. It is live. Don't worry. We're here. Um, let's have a look. Trish says, hi, everyone from Florida. I find myself cringing at the price of alcohol-free mocktails. Now that I'm saving money on drinks, when I drank alcohol-free beer, it made me miss beer. Yeah, that's the danger. That's the danger. That's why I think it has its place. But if you if you're finding that you're drinking it every night at home on your own, I think that's a red flag, red flag. I think it's fine to stand at a party with a bottle of alcohol free beer so that people don't pressurize you into having a drink and you can let them get on with what they do without them getting obsessed with what you're doing. But I, I do think, you know, if you're going through a bottle of alcohol free whiskey a week, then there's something to be said for that. Uh, Shell, you might be right, right. I'm guessing you you might be right about alcohol, but you're wrong about heaven. How am I right? I don't think I've said anything about heaven, have I? How am I wrong? Tell me. Um, Robert Booth, my divorce went through on Monday. Time to move on. A new chapter, Robert. Um, P man, is it better to go cold turkey after six days of drinking or taper down each day? P.S. My problematic drinking returned after stopping smoking. Uh, I can't answer that, I'm afraid, because I don't know how much you're drinking and I'm not a doctor. So, you know, if you were drinking a bottle of vodka a day and you stop suddenly, then you're going to have a very severe withdrawal, aren't you? Um, and I, I can't give you medical advice because I'm not qualified to do so. So um, if you're worried about that, I would ask your GP uh, for some advice. Uh, and, you know, changing drugs is very common. Um, often people will replace one addiction with another. Uh, and that is really just evidence that you were using a drug to cover up something else. There is something else in your life missing or making you miserable. Uh, and that's very true with alcohol. Most people I meet who are drinking alcohol, the alcohol is a symptom of a bigger problem. But you got to get the drug out of your life before you can deal with the bigger problem. Um, uh, w82, 45 days now. Superstar legend, well done. Um, Slavi, listen to Craig. He knows what he's talking about. Thank you, Craig. You did a total 180 degree turn for me. Love your approach. Good man. Love it. Uh, the criminologist, shout out from Wales, Anglesey, Craig. Do you know, I had to do an audio book uh, a few years ago and the whole thing was in, had a, a, well, a character with a Welsh accent. <laughs> Don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. Um, Philip, I'm not 100% free, but I do have a plan. Good man. And the good thing is, Philip, you're, out, you're always here every week. I see your name every week. So I got to love that. Um, K2, thank you for the $10 super chat. I really appreciate that because I know you don't have to. Uh, I work in the airline business, appreciated your duty-free walkthrough video recently in an inclusive beach resort, watching coworkers get nonstop beer while I had to beg for a bottle of club soda. Yeah, yeah. Airports are weird things, aren't they? It's It's, it's just like... I don't know why. Alcohol's just everywhere. They're constantly trying to sell it to you. They're constantly trying to get you to drink it. And all the rules of normality, of normal life, disintegrate in an airport. 
people who don't even have a drinking problem will have a glass of wine at seven o'clock in the morning. It's bonkers. I found that there are two places on planet Earth where people will drink whiskey at, uh, at eight o'clock in the morning. One is an airport and two, as I discovered in England, is a chain of bars in England called Weatherspoons. If you're English, <laughs> you will know. Um, Weatherspoons are the weirdest pubs in the world. They're, the whole clientele of a Weatherspoons, you, you know exactly what you can say in there and what you can't say in there. Everyone in a Weatherspoons is an anti-vaxxer who supports Brexit and thinks Brexit was a good idea. Sovereignty. It's best just for me just to stay quiet when I'm in there. Weird place. Um, there's a cat on the roof. Let's see. Jules M. Uh, I feel so strongly that this is going to work for me after so many times of trying on my own, feeling positive. Yeah. And it really is mindset, Jules, you know, and it's fine. Don't feel as though you're being arrogant, you know. It's fine to be confident. It's fine to say, I've got it. This time I'm doing it. Um, Mohammed, good afternoon, Craig. All your videos are inspirational. Have uh, your book, Alcohol Lied to Me, but I'm still struggling to stay sober path, but I'll never give up trying. What turns you back to alcohol, Mohammed? What's, how do you know it's time to drink? What is that voice in your head saying to you? Because it will be selling it to you. It will be saying, this is not right. You don't like this. And this is the solution. And it's, it's alcohol. So just hit, hit the comment and tell me, what is it? What is that clown saying to you that alcohol is going to be a benefit? Um, let's have a look. Um, Philip Lane, maybe the 0% gym will take long to get through and save you money in the long term, and at least it's a healthy alternative. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. My wife, who's not a drinker at all, I've said previously she has like four or five alcoholic drinks a year, thought it was lovely, thought the alcohol-free gin and tonic was, tonic was really lovely. Um, as I said, it was just a bit confusing for me. Um, how long are we done? 50 minutes. We'll wrap up fairly soon. Uh, apologies if I've missed your question. I'm trying to scan through them as quick as I can. Um, let's have a look. Michael, I refuse to be a prisoner of alcohol anymore. Once I made the decision 20 minutes into your webinar, I never wanted it again. Now, 28 months later, never have a problem. Life is good. Good man. Um, Elena, counting the days is actually one of the things that depressed me when I relapsed. The thought of, oh no, day one again. So I decided not to be on day one again. I still have two years, if you ask me. Very good. Um, <laughs> I was at a party recently, sang some karaoke. People couldn't understand I could do it being sober. Strange. Yeah. All of these things that um, require some confidence, but instead of using confidence, people use Dutch courage. They're so much better sober. You know, the big one for guys is approaching women. By, you know, guys can be the most confident, successful businessmen in, in the world. They can be super wealthy. They can have everything going for them. They can be handsome and all this sort of stuff. But approaching a girl and asking her for a date can be terrifying for them. And so what tends to happen is they get drunk first and then they stumble up to a girl or a woman in a bar and, and, and kind of slur this line out. Can you not imagine how much better that would be if you did it sober? From everyone's point of view, from the way you feel to the way she perceives you. She was, you know, there's nothing less attractive than having some drunken, slobbering fool come and badly execute a chat up line on you, is there? Imagine, you know, being that woman in that situation and, and having a confident, handsome man do it. It's, you know, everything is better sober. Um, is talk, I'm going to put you in a timeout here because I think you're, uh, 
<laughs> going off at a few tangents, let's just put it like that. Um, Slavi says, just one drink equals remorse. Exactly. You will regret it. Um, Doug, hello all. I'm new, uh, new here as well. Love it. Good to have you, Doug. Hope you hit that subscribe button. Bourneville, what do you think is the future for alcohol? Will it be seen as the poison it is? Yeah, I think so. But this is a generational thing, I think, now. Um, we can see that happening, Bourneville. You know, the young people are, are much less obsessed with it than we were when we were younger. You know, getting drunk, getting served alcohol was like this, you know, running the gauntlet. It was this stamp of approval. It was a big deal. It was how you were cool. You know, you'd go out and get drunk. And more and more these days, it's not cool. Young people uh, increasingly are seeing it as not a cool thing to do. So we're probably uh, going to see that bleeding through as, as the generations get older. But sadly, it kind of feels like we're, we're decades away from that being the norm and it being, you know how at the moment it's, if you saw a, an alcohol-free bar, you'd be like, wow, that's a novelty. Oh, that's unusual. I think we're decades away from that reversing, you know, that alcohol-free bars are everywhere and you might occasionally see a, a proper alcohol bar and you'd be like, wow, that's unusual. So I think it's coming, but slowly. Uh, and if you already have a problem with alcohol now, it's not going to come quick enough to change life for you. You know, if you're hoping that life will change around you and you won't have to do anything, I think that's probably wishful thinking. Um, Jim says, the alcohol industry says, drink responsibly, three glasses of wine a week increases a woman's chance of breast cancer by 15%. So what does drink responsibly mean? Yeah, and three glasses of wine, it's not even a bottle of wine, is it? So if three glasses of wine increases your chance of breast cancer by 15%, imagine if you're a woman, you're drinking the quantity that I was, you know, a bottle, bottle and a half, two bottles of wine a night. I mean, you're basically saying, give me cancer, aren't you? I want cancer, please. That's what you're saying. Um, all right, we're going to wrap up really, really soon. Let's just give a, a couple of shout outs here. Um, Charles, thanks, Craig, for helping people. You're appreciated. Thank you, Charles. That means a lot. Um, uh, RV man, the like numbers are rising. Nice. And thank you for liking this video. It really helps. Um, that's how YouTube knows that people like this content. And that means they'll show it to more people. That means we can help more people who are in the loop, that miserable loop of alcohol. So I really do appreciate you liking the video and sharing it. Um, <laughs> in fact, let's give the last word to RV man. And he quite rightly says that this is your last chance to hit the like button. So thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, don't forget, make put it in your diary. Make sure we get together every Wednesday and have our little meeting. It only takes 40, 50 minutes. We all come together, remind ourselves why we're doing this, remind ourselves that we're not alone. There are many, many people around the world just like us who fell into the trap of problem drinking and now are choosing to live a better, happier, sober life. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.